All right, folks, it's Bass Action back in action here. In this video, we are going to work through some rules, some coordinate geometry rules for transformations. So we're gonna do this over the course of two days and you'll notice that my notes here are already filled out. So you're gonna to need to pause this and make sure that you fill out your notes as well as I talk through these. So um, let's just jump into this here. So we're gonna have several types of transformations. The first ones we're going to look at are reflections, okay? So we're gonna look here at these reflections. So our first rule will be a reflection over the x-axis. So what I want you to notice over here on your graph right now, you only have this black graph right here. So if we are going to reflect over the x-axis, I want you to draw in this horizontal line here to indicate this is what we're going to reflect over. So you can see that my graph here does in fact look like each of my points have been reflected over the x-axis. These two points right here, look like nice reflections over the x-axis. These two points are a reflection over the x-axis and these two. Now the question is, is how did I get this? So the rule that I followed when an instruction tells you to reflect something over the x-axis is that the x value, whatever x value you're given, is going to stay the same but the y value is going to change sign. If it was positive, it'll become negative. If it was negative, it'll become positive. So let's take a look over here. Um, these are all of my given ordered pairs. Negative 3, 1 corresponds with this point, 2, 4 corresponds with this point, and 5, negative 6 corresponds with this point. So I took this original point, negative 3, 1, followed my rule, and I got this new point, negative 3, positive 1. So I think I even said positive 1 there. I meant to say negative 1 up there. So negative 3, positive 1 is my new point, so I plotted that point. My point 2, 4 became the point 2, negative 4, so then I plotted that point. Now this is really important, okay, really, really important. Listen carefully. As soon as you plot the second point, you want to connect. You want to plot, plot, and connect. If you just plot your three points, it's going to become really confusing down the road. So you plot a point, plot another point, draw on your segment. Then I had my new point, my, or my original point, and I again followed my rule. The Y value changed sign, I plotted, and then I connected from where I last left off. Okay, So that's a reflection over the x-axis. Now we're going to look at a reflection over the y-axis. So now we're going to reflect over the y and we're going to have a new rule. This time the x values are going to change sign and the y value is going to stay the same. So my points here, negative 3, negative 1, these are the same points. We're going to use them over and over and over again. This negative 3, negative 1, the negative 3 now became positive and the negative 1 stayed the same. The 2 became negative, the 4 stayed the same. The 5 became negative, the negative 6 stayed the same. Now when I graphed this, what I did was I plotted my first point over 3 down 1, then I plotted my next point, negative 2, 4, and I immediately connected. Then I plotted the last point and connected again. When I'm all done, you can see I've drawn in this line that we're reflecting over, and now each of my points do appear very nicely as a reflection. The next rule that we're going to look at is a reflection over what is called the identity line, okay? The line y equals x is called the identity line, and this is a very, very important line as you move forward in your algebra. Now, what's going to happen when we reflect over the identity line is the x and the y are going to flip places. So whatever was x becomes whatever was y. Whatever was y becomes x. So what I want you to notice over here is I graphed this identity line, this line y equals x. Okay, This is our line y equals x. And simply what it means is a line with a slope of 1 and an y-intercept of 0. So each time the x and y coordinates are the same. So I drew in that line. This picture looks really complicated. This is where following your points in order is really important. 
So notice this new point here, negative one, negative three, is because y was negative one, it became x, x was negative three, it became the y. The four goes into the x position, the two goes into the y, and they just flip-flop. Again, we're going to plot the point, negative one, negative three, then I plot my next point, four, two, and I would immediately connect. Only then do you plot your third point and then connect. If you try to plot all three, I can't emphasize it enough, you're gonna be really confused on how to draw it. Okay, we've got a couple more that we're gonna do. We're also going to look for a reflection over the line y equals b. Remember, this is a horizontal line. So if we're going to reflect over a horizontal line, our rule is going to become a little bit more complicated. The x value is going to stay the same. The y value is going to take the y value that we had. It's going to make it negative, And we're going to add to that two times whatever our line equals. So for example, if I wanted to take all of these points and reflect them over the line y equals negative three, all the x values stayed the same. And you can see I did a little bitty calculation here. So again, you're gonna wanna pause this. I can't emphasize that enough. This little calculation here, what I did was I followed my rule. My negative one became positive because I changed my sign. And then I was adding two times negative three, so I wrote it as a minus six. This is one plus two times negative three. That gives me my new y-coordinate. For my next one, my four became negative, and then there again is the two times negative three. My six became positive, and there's my two times negative three. That gives me my three y-values. And again, I'm gonna plot those. So I, would, I went negative three, negative five, and then I went two, negative 10, and connected, and then I went five, zero, and I connected again. Notice that this right here, this is my line y equals negative three. And when we look at our points, sure enough, they're very nice reflections over that line. Next one that we're gonna look at it's going to be very similar. We're going to reflect over a vertical line this time, and we're going to call it x equals a. So its new rule is similar to the last. The x value is going to change sign, and now we're going to add two times this value. So it's very similar to what we did before. And then, of course, the y values all stay the same. So if I want to reflect over the line x equals negative four, you can see over here, I drew that in for you. I would encourage you to draw it too. Makes the mental picture of these so much easier. All my y values stayed the same. All these are the same. And then you can see I did my little calculations again. I changed my sign and I added two times negative four. I changed my sign, I added two times negative four. I changed my sign, I added two times negative four. So then I plotted my points. Negative five, negative one, then I went to the negative 10, four, and then I went to negative 13, negative six. Okay, now our next one, this is the one that's probably gonna look a little bit different in your Canvas quiz. If we want to do a horizontal translation, this is sometimes also called a shift. So you can see here that I even wrote that right here is our shift. So we've got our shift here. Now, if we want to shift something, all we're going to do is we're going to take all of our points and we're just gonna slide them in whatever direction it says. So if I wanted to shift right three units, I take all of my X values and I just add whatever it is that I'm moving. So that's what this x plus c is, but the y's have to stay the same. So here's all my y's, they all stayed the same. I took my x and I added three. I took my x and I added three. I took my x and I added three. And that gave me my points. Zero, negative one, up to five, four, over to eight, negative six. 
Now, the one extra thing, this is important, make this note, the one extra thing when you see this on your Canvas quiz, it'll look like this. It'll say translate, and it'll write it like this, three comma, and in this case, I'm gonna say zero. This is the horizontal translation. So if he, if he wants you to do this translation, you're just going to take this x value. This is the same as the three right here, okay? Last one we're gonna look at is on the top of the next page, and it's very, very similar again. This time's gonna be a vertical translation, all right? And we're gonna go D units. So since we're only gonna move up and down vertically, now all the x values get to stay the same, and we're just following these rules over here. So the new y coordinate is whatever y was before plus whatever the shift is. So for in this case, let's say I want to shift down negative 3. That's really a negative, or down 3, that's really a negative 3. This could, in your Canvas quiz, maybe look like this. This is another way of saying, a vertical shift down three. So again, I just took my negative one and then I added negative three or subtracted three. Four and the negative three, negative six and the negative three, okay? So all of the Y values just move down, all the X values stay the same. So your Canvas quiz is just gonna ask you for these individual coordinates. So it's gonna ask you for an X or a Y based on a certain transformation. Don't hesitate whatsoever to keep this notes packet with you so that you can easily reference each of your rules, okay? Don't, I'm not really looking for you to necessarily have these crazy memorized. You probably will memorize them because they're pretty straightforward, but it's okay if you have your notes in front of you when you do the Canvas quiz and you need to flip back and forth. Okay, that's it. That's all that we're gonna do um, on this today. And then our next lesson will be rotations and that is definitely a little trickier.